Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit more about World of Warcraft, classic World of Warcraft. What I want to talk about today are some things that are going to be different than it was back when it was current. Things that I am pretty sure are going to yield a different experience than what we all happen to have back when it was current or if you haven't played the game back when it was classic, when it was just 1 to 60, are going to be different than the people who played it when it was current. Not all of these are necessarily bad things, but, you know, looking at the game now just like two days away from release, I'm aware that some things are going to be different, and I want to just make a little bit of a video and also to ask you guys what you think will be different. So the first thing that is going to be different is actually the look of the game. I've talked about this in a previous video, but they are using the modern engine essentially to render the older graphics. That has a different effect than if you were to play on the original 1.12 client, which is something that you may have experienced if you were playing on a private server. The original 1.12 client had better anti-aliasing, at least by default. So the newer, more modern version of the client that we got, uh, I think back during Warlords of Draenor, replaced the older true anti-aliasing with some post-processing anti-aliasing that just doesn't work as well. So when you look at things like stairs, you see a lot more jagged lines where everything used to be just really smooth and really sharp and clear uh, back in the day, so to speak. The other thing about the way that it's going to look besides the anti-aliasing is the full screen glow effect. This is a thing that back in vanilla, and I'm not sure when the full screen glow effect actually exited uh, ex exited the client, but it was, a, it was a thing that I used to run with all the time back when the, the client was current, and it taxed your system a little bit more for some reason, but it was this very unique kind of bloom effect that was present in a lot of games around the same time as World of Warcraft. It existed in Oblivion and it existed in a couple of early Xbox 360 era games. And it's just a really interesting effect that you see. It's one that's very, very difficult to duplicate. Uh, the best that I could probably do is to just like show you an old screenshot, maybe. Um, you had this much softer look, especially on lighting. You had this soft lighting across objects. I'm very nostalgic for that full screen glow effect, and I don't think it's going to be present in the new version of the client, at least I haven't seen it be present. So it is going to look a little bit different than it looked in the day. Plus, you're probably going to be playing on a modern widescreen monitor. Back when I played Vanilla WoW, I still played on a 4x3 monitor. I hadn't bought a widescreen monitor at that time, and I didn't until maybe even the third expansion. I don't remember when I actually bought a proper size monitor. And now I play on an ultra wide monitor. So in that case, it's gonna look quite different than how it looked in the past, uh, but that's okay. I'm okay with being able to see more of the world. I'm okay with a bigger experience, but that smaller CRT look, it's just, it's gonna be a lot different than it was. The next thing is the patch history, and mainly the patch history having to do with mechanics, the way classes work, buffs and debuffs. When the game was current, there was a series of changes that happened with each patch. Some classes would get nerfed, some classes would get buffed to try to level out balance. Warlocks, uh, when the game launched, were actually quite bad and they got a big buff to, to become better. Um, all of those things are now basically in the past when the new classic client launches, which is that uh, rather than having a patch history, you know, 1.1, 1.2, with all of these adjustments happening while people are playing the game, we're at 1.12, meaning all the mechanics are set in place with the final version of vanilla. This is not necessarily a bad thing because you really wouldn't want to play a, a 1.0 or 1.1 uh, warlock where the the class really just isn't very good and dots don't do much damage. You want to play the later version of Warlock where the class was competitive with all the other classes, where the class was powerful and was good at the game. That's that's what you want to do if you're playing Warlock. But it does produce a different effect. Playing it at launch and during those first couple of years that the game was live and having all the changes happen to the classes and the mechanics, the eight debuff slots expanding to 16 debuff slots, for instance, when you're finding a boss, that changes wildly how you approach some of the PvE content. It changes wildly how PvP 
was experienced. Early PvP was very different from later PvP. Same thing with patch history. You have uh, battlegrounds that were released at different times. You have changes to the battlegrounds that happened over time. I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of people don't remember that Altrak Valley had a physically different map when it was released, where the cave where the Horde began is kind of far up the map. It's not back at their base the way it is with Alliance. Not just that has changed, though, too. There were hordes of NPCs, these elite NPCs that were just full of, uh, you know, they just filled the battleground and were very difficult to kill. So it was very difficult to just progress down the, the battleground and, and cap all the different towers and burn them because you had to fight all of these very, very high level and difficult to kill NPCs. And especially when the game was released, they were even harder to kill. That made it more important to do the things like gather the armor scraps, summon the big tree guy or the frost lord or whoever uh, to go and actually kill some players and help you clear out some of those NPCs so you could get further down the map. AV in particular was a very different experience as the patches progressed. And if we're getting the 1.12 version of Altrak Valley, you're going to get something more approximating a current or live version of AV where it's a it's an epic battleground, but not nearly as epic as it was. Uh, in fact, it was probably too epic in the sense that it just took too long to clear AV. It used to be an Altrak Valley match would go on for days without any side being able to make progress. Just people getting 2,000 HKs in the middle of the field of strife without anyone making any progress. It's probably better that they cleared out some of those NPCs to make the battleground actually be able to be completed in a reasonable amount of time. But it is a different experience. That's the main thing. It won't be the same as it was. Likewise, with PvP battlegrounds, um, if they are released with certain pieces of content, which seems like they're going to stagger certain content releases, um, one of the things that... I think is going to be present in this version of the game is battle groups, meaning that you have cross-realm battlegrounds. This wasn't the case when the game launched. It only happened right before Burning Crusade came out. And for some people, it was a big improvement. If you were on a faction that was very overpopulated, having those cross-server battlegrounds meant that your cues for getting into a battleground went way, way down. They became much, much easier to get into a battleground. However, there was something that was rather special about only playing against other people on your server, and that was you got to know the people on the other side. You got to know who were the good players on the other faction, and you developed rivalries. That's going to be absent if they have that. It's going to be a really different experience where the battlegrounds are much more faceless, people can be more toxic because there's no social consequences for that, versus everything being isolated and on your own server. That produced a much different social effect. Uh, and the main thing is that the the battlegrounds are going to feel much different as a result. Another thing that I expect to be quite different in this new version of Classic is I think content is going to be cleared much faster than it was back when the game was current. There's a couple of reasons for this. The first one is that back when the content was released, there was no you know, public test realms where people could try out the boss fights and develop strategies and then publish them. The strategies were unknown. The content came out and the top guilds had to go in there and figure out how to kill them. It took weeks or months to kill different uh, to kill different bosses to figure out what the strategy actually had to be. Uh, nights and nights of wiping. Now, if you go into like the Buru fight, you know what the strategy is. If you go into Kill Cthulhu, you know what the strategy is because it's already been figured out years and years ago. You just have to execute the strategy and work on uh, getting the strategy worked out and, and actually perfected to, to kill Cthulhu. That also ties a little bit into the patch history is that as the game got updates, certain PvE content got easier as you went. So, um, you know, when 1.4 was released, which was, I, I think, Blackwing Lair and, and uh, I think ZG came after that, it was, it was more difficult than when 1.12 was released where you got better balanced skills and classes were better. So just in general, the, the final talents and the final arrangement of the way spells work, the final gameplay elements, make the earlier PvE content a little bit um, not trivial, but certainly easier in a lot of cases. So expect content to be cleared a lot faster because people know the fights and because they have their, their ending talents. I think you'll also have the 16 debuffs instead of the 8 debuffs that changed as part of the, the patch history as well. Uh, so if you're expecting people to be working on Nax for months and months and months, chances are a, the top guilds will clear it fairly quickly because they know what they're doing. Um, so that's something that you can expect. Another thing is that leveling is going to be faster than it was when the game is current. Now it's going to be much slower and much more difficult than modern retail WoW, 
obviously. However, it's going to be slower than people remembered. And I think my first character that I leveled, I took like 15 days to level this character to 60. It was really hard. Now I think I'll probably level a character in half that time. Because I know the quests, I know the world, I know the mechanics of the game, I know the classes now because I've been playing the game so long. So I'm going to level much faster and I think everyone else will as well. I think it's still going to be enough of a contrast from retail that people are going to look very positively on that long level leveling experience. But it used to be more brutal in the day, mostly because people didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know how to do the quests. There weren't things like Quest Helper. If you didn't understand a quest, you had to ask your guild or go look it up on ThoughtBot or something. Um, and now you're going to have, I presume that there'll be some some mods like Quest Helper that will just let people be able to level super efficiently like they do today. It's not going to be the same um, long, maybe arduous, but satisfying and difficult experience that it was in the past. Just be aware that leveling is going to be easier than it was. Um, PvP likewise is going to be different than it was, partly because we had the patches change, partly because people approach PvP a little bit differently in, in the modern game than they did in the past. When the game launched, there weren't battlegrounds. You PvP'd simply because that was what you did. Red meant dead. It was just a thing that you did as kind of as part of the role-playing element of earlier MMOs. You were Alliance and therefore you wanted to kill Horde. The idea of not being able to kill the faction that you're fighting a war with seems kind of ridiculous when you stop and think about it, but uh, PvP will be different. People are going to approach it a little bit differently than they do today. Um, so expect it to not feel the same as it did back in the day. And part of that is going to be more experienced players. They know how to play their class. People will be better at PvP or possibly worse at PvP. I'm not sure. But I think you're, you're going to have people that aren't quite as blindsided by the difficulty of getting stomped in PvP because they've been playing the game uh, been, been playing the game before. And I think you might also have people who come from retail that just aren't prepared for um, how PvP works in vanilla, just how brutal it might have been or how difficult it was to avoid because you don't have things like flying mounts and things like that. Uh, PvP was a, a, um, a very different experience back then. I think it's going to be different this time simply because you know, player attitudes are different. Another big one is that we didn't have social media the way it is today. Back in 2005, I think the only social media that was popular was maybe MySpace, maybe. But the only social media that you really had was guild forums. That was like the original social media that I remember was getting on guild forums. And I know most guilds in, in retail probably don't even have a website anymore. Guild websites, not as much of a thing as they were. Guild forums, not as much of a thing as they were. Uh, you didn't have streamers back in the day streaming out the game uh, and having people follow and that sort of stuff. And by the way, I think streaming is kind of going to be a joker card in the mix. You have streamers that are playing. Are people going to watch the stream and snipe the stream and go gank that person? Oh, you know, they're in Altrak Valley or let's go let's go cube for AV. Or, oh, you know, they're hanging out in Hillsborough. Let's go gank them. Uh, is that going to be something that we're going to see uh, or not? I think it's going to be very interesting. But back in the day, it was a much more isolated experience. When you logged into WoW, you weren't taking any other part of the internet with you. You weren't taking the world with you. When you logged in, you were whoever your character was. And that's how people knew you. That's how people interacted with you. That was all that it was. You weren't logging into the game as, you know, I, I'm David Stewart, I'll log into the game and be the character, but if I'm streaming, people will know I'm David Stewart, they'll see the character name and know who I am, know where all my social media is, know that they wanna gank me, things like that. It's gonna be a completely different experience with streaming and social media than it was back in the day. Much less of a second life, much less of a refuge from the world. And I think, um, I think we need more of a refuge from the internet in particular. Not just the world where everybody knows us, but the internet where everybody knows us. So I think uh, I think it'd be much better if we were able to play the game, and I think you probably could as an individual, play it completely more anonymous. The idea of integrating battle battle.net chat, it's like we don't really want that. We want people to be able to feel like they're a little bit more able to escape into the world of Warcraft and not be kind of inundated by all this other information and demand for attention. So that's going to be very, very different. No streamers, no social media back in the day. Now we have those effects. How's it going to change the game? I'm not sure. Last thing that I'm not sure on is the experience of the player base. We have a player base that has, in some cases, been playing the game for a long time, which means we're not going to have this huge group of noobs the majority of players in wow were just awful at the game back when the game was current which made everything more difficult and um 
Now I think people who are maybe new to the game or not good at the game, I'm afraid that they're going to be at a, at a slight disadvantage in terms of skill. Luckily though, I think I think Vanilla WoW compensates for this a lot. You have to group with other people. You need to be kind to other people. People used to teach each other how to play. More experienced players used to take the time and be like, hey, you know, I played that class. I know how that spell works. Or my friend plays that. This is what he does. And so you you learn the, the finer points of playing your class through positive social interaction. So I think there's going to be a lot more of a mitigating um, harshness to people who are new at the game. I think it's going to be a great opportunity to get into the game if you've never played it because it's so much more social that you're not going to have uh, you're not going to have as many issues with uh, not knowing how to play the game and having people be so much better at it that you don't really know how to access their knowledge. It's everybody's going to be kind of grouped together, and uh, I think that'll happen more organically, just like it did in the past. But that more experienced player base may make the game um, a little bit quicker and everything. Uh, it's just might give it a different experience. You won't have as many noobs wandering around completely clueless about how things work. So it's not going to be the same. Is the is my main point. So anyway, um, thanks so much for watching leaving your comments down below. What do you think is going to be different about this new version of Classic that's coming out in a couple days? We'll find out in a couple days just how it is, and uh, maybe we'll talk again about this a couple months from now and see what's up. Um, right now, my plans are to play Horde on Herod, so if you're going to play Horde on Herod, I, people keep telling me it's going to be massive queues. I think it's always better to be on a high pop server than a low pop server because there's more people to play with, but uh, if that changes, I'll put out the information on a video or like on the youtube post or maybe in an email or something like that so uh, anyway let me know where you're playing and, and what you plan on doing and uh, maybe we'll be able to group up and have some fun together so i'll see you guys next time